Hello students, welcome to Royal Palace Pew College Jamkhandi online classes. My name is Sanjay sir and I'll be teaching you biology. Today we'll be studying about another topic of organisms and population chapter and that is population interactions. So let us dive into that particular topic and we'll start understanding what and all this topic offers us. So let's start. To begin this particular uh, chapter, we start understanding first basic concept called as life history variations. So let me tell you one point about life history variations is that different organisms have evolved in this atmosphere as if they were having choice. No, in reality, the organisms were not having any kind of choice of their own. The organisms were not having any kind of uh, choices to change themselves morphologically, anatomically, physiologically, psychologically, etc. etc. It was the condition during which the organism was not at all having any chance and it entered into the mode of adaptation and that's why different organisms have got different tendency of adaptations and this gives us a wonderful topic called as the life history variation which clearly indicates that all those organisms which are present on this earth are not at all by any kind of uh, chance or any kind of hope they were there because they thought that this is the particular mode of survival and survival is the key to success. Now when we start understanding this particular topic, we come to know one basic understanding and that is the R value. Sir, what is R value? I told you in my previous class itself that R is nothing but a natural increase which is nothing but the difference between B minus D wherein which B is nothing but birth rate and D is nothing but death rate. And when we say that the value of R is positive, then of course we should have to understand a common point here that if the R is positive, then the number of births should be more. If the R is negative, which, which should not be happened, which means that the number of deaths are more. So that's why I'm telling you, if the value of R is higher, it indicates that the number of births are more. And the organisms have got a tendency that if they want to reproduce, if they want to adapt, if they want to score more, if they want to survive, then they should have to get a particular adaptation wherein which they should be having a capacity to evolve to maximize their reproductive fitness wherever the habitat they live it doesn't matter but if that habitat is hospitable then also they should have to come across a different evolvement of maximizing their reproductive fitness and if the habitat is unfavorable, then also they should have to have the evolvement to maximize their reproductive fitness. Then only the population can survive. These populations are not at all basically simply living. They have a lot of pressures onto them. They have got a pressure sensitiveness such as habitat, such as water, such as soil, such as food, such as shelter, such as competitors. A lot of terminologies and a lot of pressures and forces come across for the survival of an individual or especially a group of same species called as population. Then these organisms doesn't have any other choice to get a particular strategy, a particular plan, then how to survive in this particular habitat or how to survive in this particular pressure area, how to survive in that particular forcible area, how to survive in that particular stressful area. They have to adapt to that particular atmosphere by changing their habits, by changing their needs, by changing their internal and external bodily functions. Now if we see that there are different species and different species have got different breeding varieties. In that some organisms 
they breed only once in their lifetime which means that if they give birth to only once in their lifetime their entire process of life cycle is over we can take an example of a pacific salmon fish or in case of plants we can take an example of bamboo also that we have already studied in chapter number one there are some other organisms also which breed many a times during their lifetime it may be two it may be three it may be five it may be ten it may be twenty it may be n number we can consider the examples called as birds and mammals they undergo repeated breeding conditions or reproductive conditions or they undergo a lot of sexual reproduction procedures even the organisms have got another tendency also since i mentioned about the breeding conditions wherein with some organisms they breed only once in their lifetime and some other organisms they breed many a times in their lifetime during this process some organisms lay eggs some organism give birth to young ones as we studied in once again in the first chapter of second year that is oviparous uh, organisms viviparous organisms etc etc now some organisms produce a large number of small sized offsprings and some organisms produce a small number of large sized offsprings what is the meaning of offsprings here offspring is nothing but next generation younger generation fertile generation or children right so try to understand the point here that some organisms produce a large number of small sized offsprings which means that we can go for the examples of fishes fishes reproduce and whenever they get uh, the breeding season or whenever they give birth to young ones the number of organisms will be large and that too all these organisms or all these offsprings will be very smaller in nature where in which if you take an example of a human being this human being also undergoes repeated breeding seasons in their lifetime they also undergo reproductive stages in their lifetime but when they give birth it is generally one baby that is 99 percent or sometimes it is two or maximum it is of three this is a normal condition i'm telling you and these babies or offsprings will be larger in size okay so try to understand this point this is once again very interesting point actually okay so if you go further we'll get to know another point here that is ecologists suggest that life history traits of organism have evolved in relation to the constraints imposed by the biotic and abiotic components of the habitat in which they live what is the meaning of constraints here you can point out this one as the pressure you can consider this one as the extra insufficient or unfavorable conditions which is not at all suitable for that organism to grow and survive and to reproduce so that's why these conditions in short we are discussing them as biotic and abiotic factors influencing the rate of reproduction of an individual okay and the organisms or the individuals or the populations they only survive in the atmosphere if and if they have these kind of strategies how to overcome these kind of stresses and how to get the reproductive categories how to get the reproductive procedures or the strategies to continue their generation okay students now after a short introduction about the life history variation let us enter into the another category and that is called as population interaction the organisms when they interact among themselves it may be two organisms of a same species or it may be two organisms of different species the interspecific interactions are the interactions of populations of different species we have got another interaction called as intra specific interaction also okay so these kind of interactions will be of five to six types but can be represented by some of the notations here so let us understand these notations we give a positive sign to these interactions when we talk about beneficial categories and when we talk about the profit categories we mention 
नेगेटिव साइन और माइनस साइन वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द लॉस कैटेगरीज और हार्मफुल कैटेगरीज और समटाइम्स इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज डेट्रीमेंटल कैटेगरीज वी राइट जीरो एज द न्यूट्रल इंट्रैक्शन और नो इफेक्ट एट ऑल out of these three different notations we have got six different types of interactions to us and try to observe this particular table column 1 says about species a column b or column 2 says about species b which indicates that there are total of two species named as a species a and species b and the third column gives us an idea about the different types of interactions so we have got six varieties here out of six varieties some say about mutualism competition predation parasitism commensalism amensalism etc etc and they have got different plus minus zero indications or notations also today we will be studying about a topic called as predation because this is the first topic which comes in our ncert textbook okay so let's jump into the topic of predation as population interaction and we'll start understanding these notations and what will happen between these two organisms and what kind of interaction is present let us study so in case of a predation we find two organisms as we know these two organisms we see two kind of organisms one organism is called as a predator and another organism is called as prey sir what is a predator predator organism is that kind of organism which hunts and kills prey organism is that kind of organism which is being hunted or getting killed predator is harmful in nature and prey is always the one which is getting killed in these kind of interaction where in which two organisms are there where in which one organism called as a predator after killing the prey gets the benefits to grow in its body where in which the another organism called as the prey loses its life to become a food to the predator is called as the predation type of interaction let me repeat it again predation is that kind of a population interaction where in which two organisms out of two organisms one organism will be getting benefited and another organism will be under loss and the organism which is getting benefited is called as the predator and the organism which is getting loss is called as the prey now predation is called as the nature's way of transferring higher trophic levels the energy fixed by the plants so after this let us enter into another topic called as what is the role of the predators in our atmosphere consider in a forest or in a jungle there is a tiger and the total number of tigers are 5 okay now this is a carnivorous animal it is completely dependent on the herbivorous animal or the animal which is completely eating plants for their growth and development or another carnivorous okay if this tiger stops eating the deer then the population of deer increases and these a population or increased population of a deer starts eating a lot of plants there is a systematic connection or a cycle in the atmosphere wherein which all the producers are connected to the primary secondary tertiary quaternary consumers to our system quaternary consumers are less in number and they are dependent on the tertiary consumers tertiary consumers are less in number as comparing to secondary consumers secondary consumers are less in number as comparing to primary consumers and so on and these primary consumers are completely dependent on the plants here the highest number of organisms are present as the plants so major source of energy should have to move from the plants to other trophic levels if the concentration of any of these organisms increases then there is a possibility that it might disrupt the normal biological chain which is present in the forest ecosystem that is the basic maintenance of this particular ecosystem stops so predator keeps the prey population under control 
this is also called as biological control now predators also help in maintaining species diversity in a community by reducing the intensity of competition among prey species these predator and prey relationship plays an important role in maintaining the forest ecosystem in the absence of predator species the prey species could achieve very high population densities and cause ecosystem instability as i mentioned in my previous explanation that the carnivorous population will be lesser as comparing to the herbivorous nature but if the carnivorous organism stops eating the herbivores then it is a common understanding that the population of herbivores increase in the forest and of course this ecosystem becomes unstable or instable and it is highly impossible for that producer to maintain the food availability or the source of the food to the prey so that's why predators act as the conduits and along with that they play a major role in decreasing the high population of prey in the ecosystems let us go to another topic that consider a forest and in that forest uh, uh, we have got one carnivorous organism and one herbivorous organism and uh, these herbivores know that which is a dangerous organism and which is uh, our basic terrifying organism from which organism we should have to be under fearful condition okay so if if there is a deer and the, the deer will always be remembering who is its predator okay consider a foreign organism consider an exotic organism and if that organ organism is introduced into a newer geographical area okay so in that area in that particular forest or in that particular ecosystem this particular exotic species or a foreign species is not at all having its natural predators then of course it will move very freely of course it will move very easily of course it eats anything of course its population increases of course and it becomes invasive in nature and its spreading and distribution of the population will also becomes very faster let us consider in that particular forest the predator is too much efficient and the prey is less efficient and each and every day the prey's concentration is becoming weak and one or the other day the prey will become extinct what is the meaning of extinct sir extinct is a situation where in which the concentration of the organism is not at all less it is completely finished so if the prey are extincted then the organisms which are dependent on the prey will also become extinct okay so this kind of interaction where in which the prey and predator plays an important role in maintaining a wonderful ecosystem balancing of the forest let us enter into another topic that is about predation itself the topic name is the prey defense mechanism okay we know that the predator will definitely come and will eat the prey that is a common sense okay but there are some smart organisms also there are some smart preys also they have got a tendency to show a different kind of adaptation or a mechanism so that the predator could not would not and won't not understand the prey and will not eat it in those examples let me give you one particular example called as camouflage the word is camouflage to avoid being detected easily by the predators some species of insects and frogs are cryptically colored what is the meaning of this whenever these organisms feel that there is a predator which is standing in front of them and of course in a next any minute it will be being a food to that predator it changes its bodily color it changes its body color in such a way that wherever the place it sits on it takes up the color of that particular place so that it is not at all possible to differentiate the color of the object and the color of the prey to that particular predator so of course in this particular uh, position or the situation the defense mechanism of a prey is 
changing its body color and this particular mechanism is called as camouflage another example there is a butterfly called as monarch butterfly and when this monarch butterfly was under its caterpillar stage it feeds on a poisonous weed toxic weed and this toxic weed is very distasteful in nature so whenever a bird tries to eat this monarch butterfly this butterfly tastes very distasteful in nature if you go to deserts deserts as i mentioned in one of my topic called as adaptations in that i had clearly mentioned that for the defense mechanism or for the adaptation mechanism some plants have developed thorns or spicules onto their body okay so whenever an animal tries to eat these leaves or the plants it becomes very tough for that organism to eat of course because there are spines or spicules or thorns present onto their surfaces maybe generally onto their body or onto their leaves etc etc now we'll take another example some plants produce highly poisonous chemicals like glycosides nicotine caffeine quinine strychnine opium etc etc and these are produced by the plants actually as a defense against grazers and browsers today we will be continuing the same topic of the chapter organism and population and the topic name is population interactions and the subtopic of this population interaction is competition as i discussed mentioned explained in my previous topic of this wherein which the organisms show different kind of interactions wherein which plus can be signified as the profit manner minus as the loss and zero as the neutral today we will be studying another topic of this where in which two organisms will be there and both these organisms will suffer which means that we can signify this one as minus minus which clearly indicates that both the organisms will be under loss now there are two types of interactions can occur in this particular example the first one will be interspecific interaction and another one will be intra specific interaction inter specific interaction is that kind of interaction or competition method wherein which it happens within the same kind of species wherein which intra specific kind of competition occurs between two different type of organisms or species and this competition will happen only between those organisms wherein which the resources are limited and during this limited condition only closely related organisms will come under the competitive category but it is not 100% true sometimes it may even happen to those organisms which are not closely related some totally unrelated species also come under this category of competition for example there is a geographical area called as south american lake wherein which these lakes have two kind of organisms one kind of organism is that the native fishes which are already present in that particular lake from the beginning itself and with the process of migration another type of organisms called as flamingos will also come there both these flamingos and these native fishes have got the same kind of food reservoir and that is zooplankton now in the beginning i told you that two not at all closely related organisms will also compete for the same resources and in this condition the resources are limited wherein which even the flamingos will not be getting fulfilled with respect to their stomach and at the same time the native fishes will also not at all getting fulfilled with their respect to food conditions because both these species are having the common food reservoir that is zooplankton in case of inter specific competition sometimes the feeding efficiency of one type of species is highly reduced due to the interfering and inhibitory introduction of other type of species in that particular ecosystem 
and even in this category or in this particular case though the resources are completely abundant we can take an example of galapagos islands where in which native tortoise were initially present there but due to the introduction of the goats in that particular island it actually reduced the feeding efficiency of tortoise which results in the reduction which results in the extinction of that tortoise in that particular area just because of the higher grazing capacity of those goats in those areas if we compare the herbivores carnivores and plants we can say that herbivores and plants are more affected by the process of competition as with respect to carnivores while studying competition we even need to understand three basic concepts concept number 1 competitive release concept number 2 gauss's competitive exclusion principle topic number 3 resource partitioning let us enter into these particular rules and try to understand what these rules are saying the organisms or the species or the herbivores or the carnivores which are present in that particular ecosystem or the forest area will be in the competitive process or competitive atmosphere because the surrounding forest or the surrounding ecosystem will also be having different kind of herbivores different kind of carnivores and if those carnivores enter into this particular area then this geographical area of a forest decreases because competition increases and this particular forests area will be increased resources will be increased when the competitive organisms will be reduced experimentally in their number are you understanding sir this is called as competitive release which means that species whose distribution is restricted to a small geographical area because of the presence of competitively superior species is found to expand its distributional range dramatically when the competing species is experimentally removed now understand let me repeat it again this is very very small topic the topic is competitive release consider one geographical area of a forest now this forest area or the boundary is very very small now in this small area variety of herbivores are present and carnivores are present now these carnivores are dependent on herbivores and herbivores are dependent on plants this is the nature of a forest and it continues in all the forest which is very common now consider in another forest which is connected to this one itself or which is beside of this forest is having superior carnivores or superior herbivores and these superior carnivores if they want to enter into this particular small geographical area of a forest then the number of herbivores or carnivores decreases which means that these organisms will be restricted to that particular area because of only one reason that the superior carnivores or organisms are present in the beside or neighboring forests and if and only if this smaller geographical area increases when the competing superior carnivores or the organisms experimentally reduce in their number okay students now this is called as competitive release now moving on to the next topic called as gauss's competitive exclusion principle what about this principle now understand the same kind of phenomenon this is also having one geographical area and this area we can call this one as a forest in this forest variety of organisms are there plants herbivores carnivores etc etc now in this particular situation two different carnivores or same carnivores do not or cannot coexist indefinitely of course out of these two carnivores there should be one inferior and one superior of course if there is a fight between these two organisms 
the superior organism will definitely win and the inferior organism will definitely get defeated and one or the other day the inferior organism which is competing will definitely get shut down will definitely erased off or will definitely deleted off from that particular competitive list now let me repeat the statement of gauss's competitive exclusion principle that two closely related species competing for the resources cannot coexist indefinitely and the competitively inferior one will be eliminated eventually by the superior one easy understanding isn't it students okay now after understanding this one we'll enter into the third topic called as resource partitioning as the name itself indicates that resources we say that it is nothing but water it is nothing but food it is nothing but shelter what is the meaning of partitioning just understanding this one as the sharing of resources now consider two organisms which are competitive in nature two organisms which are completely fighting with each other and if they continuously fight off one or the other day both the organisms will die off now instead of fighting or instead of competing what these organisms are doing they have developed a tendency of co-evolving now they are saying that instead of dying because of competition let us co-evolve let us mutually exchange some of the resources and let us be happy and let us work together so that me and you instead of fighting we can coexist now the resource partitioning refers to the phenomenon in which species facing the competition might evolve mechanisms that promote coexistence rather than exclusion exclusion in the sense deleting coexistence in the sense working together living together now with respect to this particular uh, topic itself there was one scientist called as macarthur and according to this macarthur he says that five closely related species of warblers birds living on the same tree were able to avoid competition and coexist due to the behavioral differences in their foraging activities meaning of foraging it is nothing but search of food maybe during the daytime or during the night time understood students this is about the topic called as competition wherein which i told you the minus minus indications of the competition competition is nothing but the population interaction between two types of organisms wherein which both the organisms will come under the loss that is minus minus and after this topic i have even given some of the examples also and after that i have given three different concepts relating to competition that is competitive release gauss's competitive exclusion principle and the third one resource partition we are studying a chapter called as organisms and populations in that we are studying a topic called as population interaction in this topic we are even studying a sub topic that is today's topic called as parasitism so let us study this parasitism and try to understand what are the different topics and examples this particular explanation has parasitism is another type of population interaction and here also we find two organisms the one organism or the first organism is called as a host and the another organism is called as a parasite parasite is the organism which completely depends upon the body of a host which might be present inside or outside the body of a host and depends upon its nutrients proteins carbohydrate fats food shelter for its growth and development now host is the one which is getting affected here now because of the increased population of these parasites and the toxins produced by these parasites may harm the host's body okay now we can signify this one as plus minus interaction wherein which plus goes to the parasite and minus goes to the host 
where in which the parasite is getting benefited and the host that is us or some other organism will be under loss condition plus minus okay so let us enter into the adaptations of these parasites so that they can completely survive how are they actually surviving in the body of a host let us understand these parasites have got a tendency from the previous uh, evolutions wherein which it has got an adaptation wherein which both the host and the parasite co-evolve the parasite will be feeding onto the materials onto the nutritions onto the foods of whatever the food is being eaten by the host and will be very happy and the host will not even understand and recognize what is present inside his body like that we can find a lot of parasites in us some parasites are useful actually and some parasites are not some parasites may even help us and some parasites may even give an infection or harmful diseases to us okay so point number one is that that is the co-evolution adaptability of the host and the parasite these parasites have even lost the unnecessary sense organs wherein which you can find out about uh, the antennas you can find it about the smell you can find it about the touch or the sensation etc etc these parasites have got a specialized organs onto their body called as suckers from these particular specialized structures these parasites suck the nutrition which is coming from the host's body they even have lost the digestive system also the reproductive capability of these parasites is very fast that means they just eat and reproduce eat and reproduce the amount of food is being eaten by these parasites will be resulting into the formation of newer individuals some parasites life cycle is completely dependent on two to three intermediate hosts also for example human liver fluke depends on two intermediate hosts like snail or a fish to complete its life cycle we can take an example of malarial parasite or plasmodium it needs a vector that is mosquito to complete its life cycle majority of the parasites harm the host by reducing the survival growth and reproduction of the host and when they do the total number of parasites if they increase in the host body it is a common tendency that the immune system of the host body decreases the parasites are of two types one type of a parasite which is present inside the body of a host for its growth and development called as endoparasite and another type of parasite which is present onto the skin or onto the body that is externally present onto the surface of a host called as exoparasite or ectoparasite now some examples for the endoparasites are tapeworms liver flukes plasmodium some examples for ectoparasites are lice on humans ticks on dogs copepods cascata etc etc now this is the general information of parasitism and before finishing this topic let me tell you another related information of this and that is brood parasitism this is also one of the very interesting topic of parasitism wherein which a phenomenon of an organism laying its eggs onto the nest of another organism see the tendency here here is one organism present or a bird is present and this bird is laying its eggs on the nest of another organism and this particular phenomenon is called as brood parasitism dear students i hope you understood this very very smaller topic of population interaction called as parasitism i have given the definition of this host parasite plus minus today we'll be studying about the continuation of the topic called as population interactions and the subtopic is commensalism and amensalism so let's get started about these two topics and we'll study what kind of explanations this particular topics offers us 
The first one is commensalism. Commensalism is that kind of a population interaction wherein which, of course, there should be two types of organisms. And one type of organism should be benefited, that is signified as plus, and another type of organism is neither under loss or profit, which means that it is not at all getting any kind of benefits or loss from the another organism, which is represented as zero. That is neutral interaction or reaction. So, commensalism is that kind of interaction wherein which one organism is getting benefited and another organism is neither benefited or loss. So, let's get started with some of the examples which are given in our NCIT textbooks. Example number one. We've already known some topics about epiphytes. Epiphytes are those plants which grow on the another plants. Okay, now we'll take an example of an orchid plant here. And this orchid plant grows on the mango tree. Okay, from the mango tree, it gets its nutrition, its shelter, and it is get, getting benefited. Now it is represented as plus, wherein which the mango tree because of the presence of orchid is not at all getting any kind of benefit or loss which is represented as zero right so we'll get to the another example that is example number two there are specialized organisms called as barnacles and these barnacles grow on the back of a whale now the barnacles cannot move from one place to another place and these barnacles need nutrition and shelter and they need to move from one place to another place. So that's why they are sitting and growing onto the back of a whale and wherever the whale goes, these barnacles get the nutrition from the surrounding aquatic ecosystem, right? And in this particular phenomenon, the barnacles are getting benefited. That is signified as plus and by doing this action, the whales are not at all getting any benefits or loss, which is signified as zero. Let's enter into another example, that is example number three. We can take the examples, common example as a grid. It is one general bird and it sits onto the top of a grazing cattle. Now the grazing cattle, because of its basic habitat of grazing, moves from one place to another place. The cattle stir up the bushes or the grasses and from those stirring up, the insects move out of those particular bushes and the egrets sitting onto the top of a whale will identify those particular insects and eat it. Wherein which these egrets are getting benefited, signified as plus and the cattle is not at all getting any kind of plus or minus here. That's why it is getting zero. Okay, students, let's enter into another example. This interaction is between sea anemones and the clownfish. Okay, now the clownfish, because of its predators, it is started moving under the influence of fear of the bigger fishes and it is moving from one place to another place. Now it needs some hiding place. So that's why it is taking the use of sea anemones. Inside this cluster and complex formation and wavy movement of these sea anemones, the clownfish goes and takes the shelter. It hides there actually. The basic word is hiding. Wherein which this clownfish is getting benefited by hiding from its predators and wherein which the sea anemone is not at all getting any kind of plus or minus in this particular reaction. So sea anemone zero clownfish is a plus interaction. Okay, so this is about the commensalism that is plus zero interaction and the four to five examples of it. Now, let us enter into another population interaction called as amensalism. Amensalism is also another type of interaction wherein which once again of course two organisms should be there, two species should be there and it is represented as minus zero. It indicates that 
out of these two organisms one organism is under loss or harm wherein which the other organism is neither benefited nor harm once again i am telling you this type of interaction is represented by minus 0 okay so we can take an example from here also the mold penicillium secretes penicillin which kills bacteria but the mold is unaffected okay now the mold gets the zero type of interaction and the bacteria gets the minus kind of symbolism here wherein which minus of a bacteria indicates that the bacteria will be under loss wherein which the mold is completely unaffected means it is having zero type of interaction symbolism are studying the chapter called as organisms and population and this is the last topic of this particular chapter called as population interaction and the subtopic is mutualism okay then let's get started in studying mutualism like other population interactions mutualism is also that kind of interaction wherein which it involves two kind of organisms or two species and both these species are under the beneficiary conditions that is both get benefited and mutually they have this kind of association throughout the evolutionary stages of the life this mutualism can be represented by plus and plus symbolism okay students now let us enter into the examples of this particular type of population interactions example number one this is about lichens as we have studied in our PUC first year itself that the lichens show a mutual relationship between two types of organisms one is algae and another one is fungus the lichen association with the algae is called as phycobiont and the lichen association with the fungus is called as mycobiont the fungus helps in absorption of the nutrients and the protection and the algae prepares the food we can go for another example like lichen itself and that is mycorrhizae mycorrhizae also shows another type of mutual reaction between the plants and the fungus wherein which the fungi helps in the absorption of the nutrients and the plant provides the food for the fungus we have the same kind of uh, example with a lot of organisms in our atmosphere or in our ecosystem now let us enter into another example of this and that is mutualism is also found in between the plants and also the insects we have known a basic factor that if the insects were not at all present in our atmosphere then we were not at all existed in this atmosphere because of insects and because of their specialized so wonderful behavior adaptation workability called as pollination the plants get the reproduction without the insects it is highly impossible we can say that with respect to water with respect to air it is possible but insects play a major role in pollination and hence the reproduction of the plants the plants in their flowers they contain androgen and gynoegen whereas the androgen is filled with pollen grains pollen grains are food pollen grains are proteins pollen grains contain a lot of nutrition in them so if the grazing animals moving from one place to another place they help in pollination that is one fact and in return the plant rewards the animals by giving pollens to them so it is like uh, the animals are getting benefited and even the plants are also getting benefited the animals are getting benefited by eating the pollens as the protein sources and the plants are getting benefited as a source of pollination okay now we need to understand another topic called as pseudo copulation we can even study a relationship between a fig tree and a female wasp 
A female wasp in search of better place to lay its eggs reaches to the fig tree and lays its egg inside the fig tree itself. Now the fig tree gives provides nutrients to the eggs and the wasp helps in pollinating that particular fig tree. They say that the fig tree is not at all having any other option than the wasp here. Okay, now the wasp and the fig tree has got the closest mutual relationship wherein which both these organisms are getting benefited. The fig gives the protection and it takes up the pollination and the wasp lays its eggs and gets the nutrition. Okay, now we can even go for another example called as orchid and the bee interaction. So orchids are those kind of plants. Not all the orchids, I am telling you about one Mediterranean orchid example here and the petal of this orchid plant resembles to the female bee. Now the male bee thinks that this is the female bee and goes for the reproduction. Now while doing so, the orchid provides pollen grains or the pollen grains will be attached to the body of the bee and which moves further into another orchid and gets it pollinated. Now the orchid tree gets pollinated and at the same time the male bee gets the nutrition from the pollen grains. This is also a wonderful uh, mutualistic relationship between the orchid tree and the male bee. Okay, so this topic comes under the subtopic called as pseudo copulation, wherein which pseudo means false and copulation means the intercourse. Here the male bee thinks that the petal of an orchid plant is the female bee and pseudo copulates it, which means that it does the sexual intercourse, which is actually a false sexual intercourse while doing so. The body of the male bee takes up the pollen grains of the orchid plant and when it moves to another orchid plant, it dusts off the pollen grains present onto its body and pollinates the another orchid plant. So students, this is the end of the lastest topic of this chapter that is mutualism.